What's up, guys? I'm Brian. I'm Leanne. And we are The, the Literals. Literals. Welcome to our home, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the tour. Let's get started. Backstreet Boy Brian Literal is an American singer and songwriter who's still living every day like it's the mid-90s and early 2000s. As one-fifth of arguably the most successful boy band of all time, Brian has earned himself a fortune over the years, while attributing all of the success in his life to God. In fact, after going solo in 2006, Brian even reinvented himself as a contemporary Christian music artist. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place. Please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. As a born again Christian from the age eight, Brian's faith has always been central to his lifestyle and it's an attribute he shares with those closest to him, including his wife Leanne and his 19 year old son Bailey. On the very year that his son was born in 2002, Brian and Leanne got ready for their little bundle of joy by scooping up their first family home, a $725,000 bungalow located in West Hollywood. Boasting a wooden gate and super tall hedges to keep out any potential prying eyes, Brian's Los Angeles home is kind of small and unassuming, but it's got just enough space to park two cars on its cobblestone driveway next to a small patch of grass out front. Moving on to the interior, you'll discover a living room that includes a fireplace with a large mantle, hardwood floors, and picture frame windows. As for the kitchen, it's got granite countertops, stainless steel appliances, and all white cabinets with silver details. Towards the back of that space is a small breakfast nook to enjoy family style meals or your morning cup of coffee. Wedged between the living room and kitchen is the home's dining space. With Brian's family being relatively small, he doesn't exactly have a gigantic table, but there is a stunning chandelier hanging above it nonetheless. Moving further into Brian's family home, you'll discover Bailey's bedroom that's been painted in an eye-pleasing shade of blue, and it boasted all that his son could want, fast cars, boats, plenty of toys, and a few musical instruments. A short walk from there is the home's guest bedroom, which is notable for the incredibly large painting hanging on the wall behind the bed, as well as the chandelier dropping down from above. Then over in the master suite, Brian's mattress rests on a gigantic wooden frame and includes some nearby French doors that provide direct access to the backyard. As for his ensuite bathroom, it features his and her sinks, as well as a glass enclosed shower and is painted in the exact same shade of red as the bedroom. Wrapping things up out in the back, there's a little bit more grass, but this one includes a huge palm tree situated right in the middle of it. There's also a fully loaded guest house for any visiting guests that Brian might have hosted during his time living here. Pretty modest home for a Backstreet Boy, but you'll learn that it was just one of Brian's two homes and the second one is much larger. Brian would eventually sell this home in 2013 for a reported $1.14 million. At the time of the sale, his wife told TMZ that they were selling this residence due to a lack of use, probably because they were spending all of their time over in Atlanta, Georgia. Brian's West Coast home might have been a little small, but his East Coast property is anything but. In fact, once you take a look at this place, you're gonna think it's straight out of Gone with the Wind because this 15,000 square foot palace not only has its own recording studio and tennis court, it's got a lake located on site as well. Originally boasting five bedrooms and seven bathrooms with over 39 acres of greenery, it was love at first sight when Brian and Leanne first spotted this $3.4 million home over 20 years back. And guess what? Then the home was much smaller than it is now, somewhere around 5,600 square feet. Brian and his wife originally fell for the home's timeless feel and its glamorous decor, all of which came included with the house when they bought it. Leanne explained to People Magazine, we bought it with amazing art and antiques. When we got the keys, it was like, don't leave us with the babies. It was magnificent, but we were so scared. 
Well, that initial fear has fallen by the wayside now. Over the past few decades, Brian and Leanne have totally reshaped their family residence by putting their own personal touches on every single room of the house, such as their chicly decorated piano room that has purple walls, gold curtains, hardwood floors, a stunning mantelpiece, and of course, an epic grand piano. A short walk from there is the home's lounge, probably the coziest area in the home, thanks in large part to those plush couches and a fireplace that's always ready for use. They also totally overhauled the kitchen with the installation of a gigantic pizza oven and bar seating with plush blue chairs as well as matching colored cabinets. There are even light up onyx countertops in here. And that's just the start. The literals even built out an entire wing for their son and added what they call a playhouse section that's so big that it's probably the total square footage of most people's entire home. There's not only a giant billiard table in here, but a poker table, blackjack table, wet bar, kitchenette, and television lounge as well. Talk about covering all of your entertainment bases. Furthermore, they added four bedrooms and five bathrooms to ensure that there's absolutely no shortage of space. But how about we talk about the one-of-a-kind rooms you won't find anywhere else, like Brian's indoor basketball court featuring the original flooring from Kentucky's historic Rupp Arena. Or how about the home's incredible recording studio, where Brian and Bailey are often found cranking out the jams and inspiring one another's creativity. When speaking with People Magazine about his home, Brian told them about this space, it's one of the most creative spots. This is where all the ideas come from and we like to spend time as a family. Elsewhere on the property are two other decent sized structures that act as a guest house for visitors and a pool house for utilities, as well as an outdoor covered patio to ensure that the literals can take advantage of the outdoors, even when the weather isn't cooperating. Known for being big entertainers, the recent pandemic kind of threw a damper on the family's hosting activities. But in a way it could have been a blessing in disguise because before that, their neighbors had had more than enough of their get-togethers. A few years ago, Brian Littrell might have taken the lyrics to his hit song, I Want It That Way, a little too literally, when he got into a tiff with his fellow Georgia residents. Around 2019, the town of Milton began to complain to media outlets that the local celebrity was ruining the vibe of their quiet community by renting a nearby mansion known as the Freemanville Estate to host a number of very loud parties. These residents explained their concerns to Atlanta's Channel 2 News, stating, It's quite a shock to see everything that's going on next door at this point. They're planning events. Multiple events are on their site. Brian's neighbors had discovered a Facebook page that he created to advertise this residential space as a performance venue, even though he had been explicitly told that he couldn't do that. His neighbors continued to Channel 2. The city told him no one's on the event facility and then he went ahead and just did it. To make it clear, Brian doesn't own the property in question, although he apparently tried to pass it off like he did. And when he requested a special permit to host events here, the city of Milton shot him down. But Brian went ahead with his idea anyway. Once the neighbors reported him, Brian was in hot water with local officials because the land the home is located on isn't properly zoned to host these large scale parties. His neighbors also complained about the construction of a new paved part of the property that was intended to be used as a helicopter landing pad. This part of the story more than anything else upset people in the community, many of who raise and breed the horses that Milton is famous for. And horses get easily spooked by the noise of a helicopter. Others worried about the safety of their kids and some worry about both, like this neighbor who explained their concerns to Channel 2. It's a liability for me because I have horses, I have children, children play on this property all the time. I never in a million years thought I'd have to tell my kids watch out for helicopters. In response to these accusations, Brian would assure everyone that the recently paved area was only meant to increase parking and it will not be used as a helicopter landing spot. He also released a statement to the local press that read in part, the literal family has lived in Milton for over two decades and is fully committed to preserving its rich history. Any and all activities that have occurred 
at the Freemanville estate have been private gatherings, consisting of the Literals' friends and family. How many events the Literals ultimately ended up hosting out here is unknown, but Bailey once threw a massive get-together after releasing his single Don't Knock It at the age of 16, People Magazine was there to spotlight the celebration. Ultimately, the Literals were never officially issued anything by Milton in the end, and at least they can retreat to the relative safety of their nearly 40 acre estate because with a property that big, they don't need to run into anyone they don't want to. All right, everyone, that's gonna bring this video to a close. Before you head out, answer me this one question. If you already lived in a house big enough to qualify as a palace, would you rent out another home just to throw a party or host it at your very own mansion? Let me know what you would do in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. My name is Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat and I'll see you all in another video. Bye.